Today's topic is the path to intent with media entrepreneur and published author Malika Chopra. Welcome to the Well Woman Show, where we interview women executives, leaders, and entrepreneurs. And you're listening to the Well Woman Show, where motivated women achieve fulfillment and well being. You're listening to the Well Woman Show. Take time for myself by coming to things like Well Woman Drinks, to be accepting of myself no matter what. Step away from judgment as much as possible. You're listening to The Well Women Show. Just, you're going to be in for a good ride. I don't regret anything. Everything I've ever done, I've learned from it, one way or another, good or bad. Being a little bit selfish for yourself, you know, put your own oxygen mask on first and then give what's left. I'm a woman. I would prefer to, to tell my own story. My story, though it's very personal, is universal. You're listening to The Well Woman Show. And now your host, Giovanna Rossi. Hi, Giovanna Rossi here, and welcome to another episode of The Well Woman Show, where I interview women leaders, executives, and entrepreneurs about their lives and their road to becoming and being who they are today. Are you feeling burned out or finding it hard to focus on your goals, or are you in transition? Well, you're not alone. We all need to activate our superpowers. These are the internal strengths and abilities we all already have, but don't use all the time. Superpowers can be cultivated, and they include empathy, love, intuition, courage, and more. Toward the end of the show, in a segment called Superpowers for Success, I ask my guest about her superpowers, and the answers will give you the strength, perspective, and power to live a well-woman life. I'm so happy you're here, so thanks for tuning in. Now, before I bring on my guest, as always, this episode is brought to you by Well Woman Life, a global community of women living our best lives. Whether it's your health, relationships, your money, or making an impact in your community and the world, Well Woman Life has you covered. You've made a commitment to not settle, to use your voice, and to live your best life. Well Woman Life offers annual memberships, workshops, and retreats to support you. Check out wellwomanlife.com slash Facebook to join our growing community. Now back to the show. Today's topic is the path to intent with Malika Chopra, and hopefully by the end of the show, you'll be inspired to set intentions in all areas of your life and take action as part of living with intent. My guest today is Malika Chopra. Malika is a mom, media entrepreneur, public speaker, and published author. Her experience includes launching MTV in India and Michael Jackson's Heal the World Foundation. Malika holds a BA from Brown University and an MBA from the Kellogg University. In this episode, Malika and I talk about living with intent, how you can be a part-time meditator and still benefit, and why it's so important to be true to your deepest desires. The free giveaway today is a chapter from Malika's most recent book, Living with Intent, My Somewhat Messy Journey to Purpose, Peace, and Joy. And you can get it at wellwomanlife.com slash 078 show. I really like this giveaway because it gives you a good introduction to her book. Before we begin, I want to let you know that this year's superpower retreat will be October 26th and 27th in New Mexico. So save the date and check out wellwomanlife.com slash events for more information. You can also join the conversation in the Well Woman Life community group at wellwomanlife.com slash Facebook. Now to my interview with Malika Chopra. I'm speaking today with Malika Chopra. Welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me. It's such a pleasure to sit down with you here during the women's retreat at the Chopra Center, which of course is your dad's uh, center that he co-founded. Um, and before we dive into your work, um, what is your involvement in the Chopra Center um, besides being Deepak Chopra's daughter. So I'm actually not really involved in the Chopra Center as a family. We've all been involved in, obviously, its beginning as it's developed. Um, Dr. David Simon was a close friend of mine as well. And so I'm so proud of seeing how the Chopra Center has grown. I've only got involved um, more as a speaker in the last two to three years as I wrote my own book and got on the speaking circuit. So for me, it's just lovely. It's like being at home with family and just sharing. Okay, so we're going to get to your book in just a moment. But I want to talk about Malika, the person as well, um, because I think you probably get 
labeled a lot because of your dad being so famous and such a leader in awareness and meditation and well-being. How and and that's had its benefits, I'm sure, for you in your life. But how has it been a burden or a challenge for you? So the first question I usually get is, "What is it like being Deepak Chopra's daughter?" And um, you know, honestly, for me, that's what I know. And I have always felt very lucky and grateful for my family because our family is really a very close family. We always have been. My mother, who's not really out in the limelight as much, um, is really the anchor, both of our nuclear family, which is me, my brother, and my dad, but even more so of our extended family. So we have a very close uh, extended family that lives in Boston, where we grew up, all over the U.S. and in India. And my mother's really the nucleus of that. So we've been very lucky. Um, you know, my dad gets to do everything that he does but my mom is the one who has kept it very anchored. So I feel first very grateful for growing up in this family. Second, people have always made assumptions about my brother and I. Um, we laugh often. Like we remember being teenagers when my dad was becoming more well-known and we'd be at a soda machine getting a Coca-Cola and um, someone would see us and they'd say, ooh, we're going to tell your dad you're caught. And we would laugh and we'd be like, ooh, this is for my dad. <laughs> um, and so, you know, I think there are many assumptions about kind of the way we are or my father is. Um, and again, I think we've grown up to realize that there's the mythology of a person and then the real person and our families. So I, you know, I really have not seen it as a burden. Um, my my parents um, and both my brother and I have always felt that you have to live authentically and be who you really are. And so even when I graduated from college, you know, I had, and my brother, neither of us had any interest really in what my dad did. It was his work, not our work. Um, I went and joined MTV and launched them in India. My brother um, became a journalist. Um, we've, you know, went, I went to business school. We did all kinds of things. So I always think about what brings people to this world of self-help and self-improvement and self-exploration. It was never something I was into, but that shifted when I was about 30 years old and pregnant for the first time. And at five months pregnant, um, one morning I woke up, it was the morning of 9-11, and suddenly an urgency to really understand who I am, where I came from, how I could serve um, was at my core because now I was going to be a mother. And um, I believe that that was the first step in my personal journey of self-exploration. So, you know, that was about 15 years ago. Um, and so my journey has really been in becoming a mom. My most recent project was more about like balancing and figuring out what, um, how to just get through the days and be happy. And so my journey has really just been um, a personal one separate from my father. Great, great uh, answer. And I want to just um, dig into something that you just said um, about your realization that you wanted to do uh, to really connect with who you were and, and your purpose here. Um, why do you think you were open to hearing that at that moment? Because I think we're often given these messages or we hear things, but we don't always, we're not always in a place to hear it and, and act upon it. So I've seen from the people that have come to the Chopra Center that often um, it's from a dark and scary place that you start asking deeper questions. So maybe people have been diagnosed with a disease, gone through a divorce, lost someone that they've loved, and suddenly your everyday is shaken up. So for me, um, you know, when I was pregnant, um, I was so excited and joyful and all the magic of becoming a mom. And then, you know, on the morning of 9-11, um, actually, we had a few hours where we thought my brother was on one of the planes. And suddenly, all of that turned into fear and anxiety and um, kind of questioning about what am I doing bringing an innocent soul into this world. So it happened at a time when it was really authentically 
asking those questions. I had grown up always asking those questions, but it was kind of like, you know, I kind of went with the flow. But when it came to a time where I really had to figure out who am I, because I'm going to be a mom bringing up, you know, these innocent souls, I felt like I really needed to know where I came from um, and what values I held that I wanted to pass on. Um, Malika, I want to ask you about your book. That's your most recent project that you're talking about. And it's called Living with Intent. And what is the subtitle? Um, My Somewhat Messy Journey to Purpose, Peace and Joy. (laughs) I love it because it's really messy, right? The whole journey of balancing everything and being a mom and or even if you're not a mom, a lot of our listeners are caregivers in other ways. Um, And we as women just juggle so many things in our lives. And so um, I really want you to talk about what lessons you've learned from your busy life and what you can share with listeners. So this project really came about um, when my kids were about 10 to 12 years old. I am, you know, of course, play the role of mother, but I'm also an entrepreneur and have a company called um, intent.com, actually. And I found that every day I was running around, you know, I was getting my kids to school, then trying to call my investors, then getting the dry cleaning, going to the grocery store. Um, And I felt that every day by the end of the day, I was exhausted. But if you ask me what I had done during the day, I really had no idea. And so I began this process to really understand, okay, what does it mean to live with intent? You know, I always talk about intent. My company is called Intent. But what does that mean? And what does it mean for me in particular? So you had a company called Intent.com before you wrote the book. Uh, yes. oh, okay. Yeah. And what, what does that company do? So my company is um, basically like you can think of it as a social media platform where people are sharing their intents um, and supporting each other from all over the world. So intention was a part of my upbringing. I grew up, my dad used to have us think about our intents every day. My first book, 100 Promises to My Baby, is actually about my intents to be a mom. So this project really started with kind of saying, okay, here I am, I've grown up around this, I talk about it all the time, and yet I am not leading a conscious or intentional life. So what does this mean? And really, the book um, was going and talking to experts. So, you know, it started with my dad, but then I spoke to Dr. Dan Siegel, Marion Williamson, Eckhart Tolle, Andrew Weil, I really reached out to kind of some of my um, mentors and teachers to really think about um, what does health, wellness, balance, happiness, living a life of purpose actually mean. And um, out of that, I came up with a path to intent, which I talk about in the book. Um, It's around the acronym I-N-T-E-N-T. So we can talk more about that. But I is for incubate, N is for notice, T is for trust, E is for express, N is for nurture, and T is for take action. Okay, and we'll link to this in the show notes. So if you're listening, and you didn't quite get all of that, we will put that in the show notes. And um, let's just talk about the first one, though, incubate, because that is such an important piece of this. So one of the things I've realized in having intent.com and doing this work for many years is that often when we ask people, what is your intent? People don't know. Um, I think many women don't know, because there's so many demands on us. We never even have the chance <laughs> to think about what we want. Well, it might be like, I just need to do the laundry or I just need to get to work and get the kids out of the house, right? That could be my intent. Exactly. And so I thought a lot about for the letter I, what word I wanted to use. Um, and, you know, there were more attractive words like imagination or et cetera. But incubate to me represented this idea of being quiet, Um, what we do in meditation, honoring silence, but also honoring time. So, you know, when we incubate, um, we really have to go to a quiet place and we have to listen. Sometimes it's not like we're forcing the answers where it's 
like actually when we have a baby we don't just have a baby we incubate <laughs> you know we have nine months of pregnancy when we plant a seed and an intent is like a seed um, we put it in the ground we put the dirt on it we let the sun and the rain nurture it trusting that it will blossom into something beautiful but we don't know it takes time so um, I chose the word incubate to really recognize that Sometimes we just need to be quiet. We need to listen. And also we don't need to be stressed if we don't know what we want. Sometimes it takes time to reconnect, to listen, and to really think about and feel what our intentions are. Yeah, that's so important because I have a lot of high achieving women uh, that listen to this show. And it's very difficult because we want to do, do, do. And how do we, how do we get there? How do we make this happen? Um, and so I talk a lot about lingering mm -hmm. with something mm -hmm. and th that could be somewhat like incubating something. Yeah. And so, you know, intents are very different from goals. So, you know, I'm also a very kind of high achieving a type goal oriented person, but intents are very different. Intents come from the soul. They come from a place when we do ask ourselves, you know, who am I? What do I want? How can I serve? Um, my dad, when we were young, he would ask us, what do you want? And we would often say, you know, tickets to the Celtics, a trip to Hawaii, all these material things. And then he'd um, ask, okay, but what about asking for love, connection, inspiration? So we were taught to ask for the qualities in our life that would make us happier, healthier, more connected and of purpose. And so that's what intentions are. They represent our deepest desires. They're very different from goals, which come from the mind, have like, you know, task orientation and an end result. Intents are really what are those qualities I want in my life. And as goal-oriented women, when we set an intention, we sometimes try to turn it into a goal, right? Like I want, you know, like one of the examples you just gave, but then turning it immediately into, okay, what's the first step to do, you know, and like immediately going to that. And so your steps with the acronym intent in your book really help us walk through that slow down and, and walk through the process. They do because I, you know, that's the thing. I think we tend to go into a goal, which is why I have take action there. Take action, though, is at the end. Um, and take action, there is a time for SMART goals. There is a time to to act. Like, intent is a verb. I think sometimes I get frustrated in the self-help world where people will say, oh, well, just set your intent, let go and trust the universe. And yes, but I think there is a, an action oriented. We have to kind of live. That's why I have it living with intent. We have to live it. Um, so I'm, I'm not opposed at all to goals and actually kind of transforming it into goals. But when you do it, having done these other steps, it's coming from a deeper, more authentic and actually more effortless place because you're really anchored in those deep desires. I like that. And I think Marianne Williamson would love that too, wouldn't she? Because I, I just was at Sister Giant earlier this year where she talked about the intersection of po um, spirituality and politics. And really, she was really trying to speak to the spiritual community about it's not just individual work. It's at some point you do actually have to engage in the outside world <laughs> and take action. So Marianne is one of my heroes. Um, and I had um, the just privilege of speaking to her when she was running for Congress for this book, Living with Intent. Um, and we just had such a great time together. And I love that she is action oriented. And actually, one of my chapters in my book is um, that, you know, I ended up also hosting a fundraiser for her when she was running for Congress and bringing a number of women in my community to hear about her. And so I think Marianne, for me, is actually probably the greatest example of someone who is a spiritual teacher. And these days, I love the word fierce, because she's fierce, and she's um, bold, and she's taking action in a way that we all can learn from. If you're just joining us, I'm speaking with Malika Chopra, and we are talking about her book, in uh, Living with Intent. Now it's time for our segment called Superpowers for Success. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. Being a well woman includes being financially healthy. 
Our sponsors, Lorraine L. and Kate Stalter of Better Money Decisions, are on a mission to eliminate complexity and confusion from your financial life. They replace Wall Street jargon with straightforward talk you can understand, and they create investment and retirement plans customized for your needs and your future. Download a free copy of their latest book, Don't Let Your Money Kick the Bucket Before You Do, and learn how to avoid the biggest mistakes women make when planning for retirement. Go to bettermoneydecisions.com slash wellwoman and download your free book today. And Malika, we're going into a segment called Superpowers for Success. So I want to ask you a few quick questions. The first one is, what does success in life mean for you? For me, it's living authentically and being connected um, with those I love in a real way. And what is living authentically? It's being true to my deepest desires. Um, It's living from a non-egoic place versus just kind of checking off the boxes. And when did you know, Malika, that you were really good at what you do? I still don't think I'm really good at what I do, but um, I've been very, um, I've been thrilled and humbled that I'm able to connect with people. And so I think sometimes when I'm speaking to a group and I can see that a few women have really been affected and touched, um, that makes me feel really happy. Can you describe one personal habit that contributes to your well-being? My meditation. I'm an irregular meditator, um, but I've been meditating for 35 plus years. And for me, that is the way that I just connect and I recalibrate. And when I'm not meditating, my life is totally frenzied. So I realize that it's the meditation that anchors me. I love that recalibrating. That so describes what it does. And what is your meditation practice? You're an irregular meditator. And I I love that because that that sort of gives permission to all the women out there listening that whatever you're doing is okay. Just you can start meditating again today. Um, So I grew up doing TM, but I practice primordial sound meditation now, which they teach at the Chopra Center. But basically, it's a mantra-based meditation. When I teach, you can use any sound. um, Use I am, aham, soham. Find a sound that's comfortable for you. And um, I try to find 15 minutes once a day to meditate. So I am not per the formula of the Chopra Center and other practices where they suggest 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the morning. The reality is I haven't done that for like 15 or 20 years. Um, But if I can find 15 minutes once a day where I can truly be quiet, be present and do my meditation, that provides that anchor for everything else. One of the most challenging times in my life for doing my meditation practice was when I had little tiny babies mm-hmm. <laughs> and toddlers. And uh, that was, you know, I'd say, well, I'll get up early before they wake up. And then as soon as you get up, they're like awake, you know, even though they don't normally ever wake up at that hour. <laughs> I think at that point, if you get a shower, you feel like you're so <laughs> grateful and lucky. And I, you brought up Marianne Williamson before, and I loved that when I went and met Marianne, she, we started just talking about her journey and my father's journey because they've been friends for you know thirty years plus. And I remember Marianne; she was laughing because she said she was a single mom. Um, she had one daughter and she didn't have anyone else to support her. And she said, your dad, he had your mom, like your mom was there taking care of you guys and doing everything so he could run around. And so she was laughing because she was so um, kind of happy that I was writing this book because she said, yes, because Deepak never got it like the rest of us. And she actually talked about um how for her, she had to structure her life and her work in a way that she was there with her daughter. And so that actually literally meant that she could not travel for more than two nights at a time. Um, And so it was such a great conversation because I think exactly as you said, there's sometimes we give these prescriptions for stuff, but like if we can't even get a shower in in the morning, (laughs) um, where are we going to find 
you know, two half hour times to meditate. So. Yeah, I remember having that conversation with my meditation teacher and she just looked at me like, she just, she just <laughs> didn't know what to tell me. So I had to figure it out. But um, my next question is, what superpower did you discover you had only to realize it was there all the time? The ability to connect with people by sharing my stories. I think before I was very self-conscious about it. Um, and maybe, you know, obviously with my dad being so well-known, um, felt like I could never do it well enough. But I have seen that just sharing honestly and authentically, if you can create some sort of shift even for one person, that's a real gift. And what advice would you give your 25-year-old self? Um, you know, <laughs> it's a good question. Remember why you're doing what you're doing. So I got very caught up in the goals and the, the degrees and um, the material things. And I've done well and I'm very grateful for them. But I think I could have done the same things if I just kept checking in and saying, okay, reminding myself, why am I doing this? And Malika, do you identify as a feminist? Um, definitely, but I wouldn't know how to define being a feminist. I'm a mother with two daughters. And so um, the urgency of making sure that they are empowered um, and doing that by leading by example um, is of utmost urgency to me. We're also living in a time where, um, you know, the devastation for women on so many levels um, is overwhelming. And um, I've really actually been personally struggling with that in the last six months. And so I'm feeling more and more the need to understand what it means to empower our voices, to find our voices, uh, and share. And just for your information and for the listeners, the way I define feminism on the show is to believe in and work towards social, political, and economic equality. It's That's perfect. And again, going back to Marianne, I think that's critical. And last question, on a lighter note, what are you reading right now? What's on your nightstand? It's a good question because I joined a book club with my friends as part of my book project. And it's crazy. We just finished reading The Master and the Margarita, which is this classic Russian lit book. Um, and it was so out of the norm of what I would read, but I loved it. That's great. I love that. I love this question because I always hear about these fun things that people are up to in their in their lives and and through the books that they're reading yeah. so thank you for that malika it's been such a pleasure speaking with you today thank you so much and honor thank you that's it for our show today remember if you need support to live your well woman life head over to wellwomanlife.com slash facebook to join us our monthly live event, Well Women Drinks, brings women together to share our successes and challenges as women, leaders, moms, aunts, sisters, and all the other roles we carry. If you'd like to attend a Well Woman Drinks near you, or if there isn't one in your city yet and you'd like to start one, email info at wellwomanlife.com. If you enjoyed the show, please take a moment and subscribe in iTunes and leave a review. This helps raise visibility, which is super helpful when it comes to producing the show every week. For feedback, comments, or just to let me know you were listening today, find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Well Woman Life. I'm Giovanna Rossi for The Well Woman Show. Until next time, have a super powerful week. <laughs>